you, Stephen. My name is Liliana Lopez, and I am a national faculty member for the Buck Institute for Education. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. I know that um, last week it was my first time presenting, and I received such great feedback from you um, and uh, took that feedback and to hopefully um, feel more comfortable this time with the technology. Um, so... This lesson um, is actually we're splitting into two parts. We're going to start we're going to start talking about planning interaction and um, staying in the target language, how we assess that interaction, an example of it, and um, also talk about a project and see what that looks like when um, we design our project. I want to start with this big um, idea with this really big quote from Helena Curtin that says. We know from research and second language acquisition that learners need to be surrounded with input that is meaningful and interesting in order to acquire a new language. Um, two really big words that go um, so much with PBL. And when we think about input, I want us to think what is meaningful and interesting. And I want us to think about our project, the project that you're creating. Um, that big meaningful idea that you're creating this project around is going to create input. So um, let's take a look at what that can look like in a world language, uh, in a PBLL classroom. So in the design, we really want to think of ourselves as project designers. We are um, thinking with this big picture for our students and for our, our learners in the classroom. And the, this big idea is going to help us with the input because when the project is meaningful and interesting to our students, um, they're going to want to learn the language. They're going to want this input and they're going to want to provide output. It's all, it's all, it's all connected. So I really want you to think about in your project, where will there be an authentic need for interaction? Where would the learner, where does the learner say, I really need to, to learn this information. I really need to learn um, this part of um, this language so that I would be able to interact with someone. And what does, what does that look like? Um, how do we make PBLL comprehensible for them when we think about our project design? What's, what's the real world purpose for them for learning um, the language and for learning the content? Um, Make it engaging, and I think overall what we should, we should really consider is um, making it fun. There are so many uh, different issues and challenges and and um, so many interesting ideas in in the world for us to think about through language um, that we we can be really creative with this. Um, I was sharing with Julio yesterday that. When I was in college, I had a whole semester course, and this is this is not in, in like in any way a bad way, but think about a, a, an 18 year old, 19 year old, or 20 year old. I can't remember when it was, um, doing a whole course on the indigenous people of Paraguay, the Guarani Indians. Now, I learned I learned a lot of information about them in my Spanish classroom about the Guarani Indians. But could I say that that was engaging and fun for that, that age when I was in college? Um, not really. But I just want, I want you to think about that. Like, why is it that we choose, um, to the content in, in, in our language classrooms? What, how, how do we come to that decision? So, um, so thinking about meaningful and interesting right away, I think about, um, Axel. I had the opportunity to, um, go to San Antonio and, um, See, um, the, I'm sorry, and I can't remember her name, the, um, the National Geographic, um, I, 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 I can't remember her name right now, but, um, see her present as a keynote speaker and talk about issues that, um, and she takes like these amazing pictures, talk about issues that are affecting our world and thinking about if we want our students to, um, if we want to provide our students with input, what what's going to hook them to want to learn about it? So I want you to think about like there are these big ideas, and I, I right away I thought about Axel, like the access to clean water, um, talking about education for women. You know, does everyone have that right to an education? Um, big world problems and challenges. I, I could think of, for example, in Spain, there's a controversial controversial issue with bullfighting, um, racism in soccer. I mean, things like that that we can really get our students to to want to. 
um, learn and learn the language both at the same time. Um, keeping this in mind too, that um, our students and want to learn a second language. They want to learn a second language and they also do want to change the world um, and they're going to find purpose, but we have to think about how we're going to design these projects and how these projects are going to lead into um, interaction. So in PB, oh, thank you. Yes, um, Annie Griffiths. In, uh, in PBL, we need PBL. We need to really think about interaction. No, always in, in three parts. Um, what does the input going to look going to look like from the teacher to the learner? How are you as the um, as a facilitator in the room going to facilitate input when it's learner to learner time? And then learner to the L2 community, because that's what's going to happen in our projects, and that's the ideal. So we want to think of when we design our projects, we want to plan and design for these three interactions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, walk you through a project. But before that, some of these, um, when thinking about this interaction, um, I want us to think about, so we have this big idea. We have this big idea for our project. What, you know, we have our driving question, you, we've worked on all that. What are the products that you're going to have your students um, com complete? Because they're also going to lead to that input that they're going, that we're going to need. And if, if they see value in that, then um, it's going to be a win-win for everyone. So these individual products can be or should be something interpersonal or presentational or interpretive. It can really depend on, you know, one of the modes of communication, um, but the team product as well. So there's not a, a right or wrong answer here. Um, ideally, we do want all three and, and a project. Um, so keep in mind, what is that going to look like for your project, this product that we're going to go into a little bit deeper for the next lesson. And, uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Lauren Scheller, and I, we actually created this great, um, it, like, informational sheet, and um, I shared it with Julio, and I know he'll share it with everyone. We took um, ideas, um, we took our proficiency guidelines, and then took ideas from um, culminating products from BIE, and thought about, like, as a novice learner, what can these students do with the language? So um, we have it in all the levels from novice mid, um, I believe, to advanced low. Um, but really, what does that look like? And help us think um, outside the box, because sometimes we get stuck in um, just like writing and speaking. But let's let's think about these authentic products that we have in the target language at all times. And let's make it real for our students. So um, this will definitely be shared with you. Um, just as you know, and, and and we don't want we want you to add to this information because you probably have some great ideas. So keep keep that in mind. If you think that there's um, a better product or something amazing that we could add for a novice mid, you know, throw that in there because we this was just a collection of, of ideas that we put together. Um, so let's start with this project idea. Um, this project idea came from a community that had a small um, Spanish-speaking population. And when I say small, it was like 10% of the school was, um, uh, 5 to 10% of the school was Spanish-speaking, and the whole district. So what, um, moving with, uh, moving to this, um, the use of technology in all, in all the schools, um, the superintendent really asked um, everyone in the district to take part in how can we get um, people up to date with um, with technology. So this came from the language classroom, from the Spanish classroom, and um, the project idea was, you know, the students would host an open house in Spanish um, and present how-tos on technology. Now, technology really meant a lot of things for um uh, the community. What, thinking about technology in this in in the school sense, um, we wanted to get um, parents and community members to understand the online gradebook. We wanted them to understand how to use the school website, the library website, how to use class blogs, how to use Skype and Twitter and Facebook. So students had a choice really on what um, they which what technology they wanted to present. 
Um, so we had the language objective, objectives and we had um, the language content. And there was a need in the community for this. We uh, we sent letters to um, to parents in all the ELL classrooms that spoke Spanish and let them know that there was going to be this amazing night and they you know they came out for it to learn. Um, and it was authentic. There was a connection to the L2 community. So keeping this in mind and thinking about input, um, we always have to think backwards. And what I did was, I started with thinking about what was this team product that these students were going to create and how um, how would we get the students to be ready for this how-to video. So I always had to think backwards. Now, this project design um, student learning guide is also on the Buck Institute for Education, and it just helps us with that backwards thinking. So we, we knew that they were going to present an, a how-to video. All the students needed to learn basic technology, vocabulary, and commands. Plus, I mean, I could add another row here as well. Just, you know, I could add another row here for um, the actual technology itself, Twitter, Skype, um, depending on what they wanted to um, uh, teach the how, you know, which how-to they were going to decide upon. And then using that basic technology vocabulary, thinking about the input that they were going to need, um, you know, working backwards, I said, well, I'm going to introduce this technology using TPR. And, um, and connecting like, you know, um, all um, gestures and movements to technology uh, vocabulary. And then um, how was I going to check that with, you know, a snowball fight, with flashcards, with quiz. Um, so thinking backwards in our um, project is always going to help us think about input at all times because it's like what are they going to need to know in order for them to be able to do this in the target language. Um, so. With the commands, it was the same thing. We, um, for the commands, we actually used an authentic text that came from um, the Apple website. And kids, I mean, there were so many comments there. There were the, so many of the kids knew this information already. It was just, it was like the perfect text to use when thinking about commands. And obviously, they learned so much more. Um, so, BIE also has another amazing tool, which is called a project calendar, because thinking about our classroom um, designing these projects, we always have to start backwards. So we started with this big idea. We picked the product that they were going to present. Um, we uh, wrote down what they're going to need to know. And working backwards, once again, now I'm talking about that day-to-day -day work. You know, what does that, what does that look like? And when I, when I look at this information in a calendar, I'm going to once again start backwards. I'm going to start at the end of my calendar, whenever, you know, whenever that is with that how to video presentation and then work backwards because that's going to always make me think about what language they will need to be able to, um, what input they're going to need, um, and how am I going to, um, scaffold or prepare for that. So, Looking backwards, I had them, I made sure that they had a final rehearsal for the how-to video presentation. Before that, that they had um, uh, stations to peer critique or review this draft of this video uh, presentation, or some of them decided to actually do like the hands-on um, version, which was fine, and um, think backwards on the draft. So all of this, I would actually split it to like, you know, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, I would actually think about the language and prepare my lessons there. So how am I going to get them to think about that storyboard video draft? How am I going to get them there to prepare that? What language are they going to need? And that's, so thinking backwards will always help us with input. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> and this is how we had, um, Thinking about that three table, you know, thinking about how we plan for interaction, um, comprehensible input was provided with um, visuals of the icons, the use of technology, cognates. Um, we spoke about the difference between PC and Mac and actually looked at authentic text there, um, their, their website and, and information there. I mean, you could go to YouTube videos. Um, and we also spoke about um, comparing and contrasting this idea of like, First, the PC and the Mac, but also the importance of technology. Like, is technology really that important? Which actually became a question underneath the big driving question 
um, which was really great that came from the students. Um, I ensured that um, our facilitated interaction when thinking about learner to learner by providing info gap activities, having anchor charts on the board, um, on the walls so that they can use this language for collaboration. You know, in my opinion, I think of PC and so they would acquire these um that, you know, use these sentence starters or sentence phrases, and they would acquire that naturally because I'm providing a context for them. So that learner-to-learner -learner moment um, was facilitated with input. Um, we brainstormed phrases for the collaborations. We used inside-outside circles. So those learner-to-learner -learner opportunities were also, there was also always input for them. And then when thinking about how we prepared the learner to connect with the L2 community, we created a survey. Um, we analyzed needs for the community once that survey was collected and um, invited them with a, um, a fancy invitation and ultimately had that presentation um, night um, with them as well. So we can take this big idea and then break it down to um, always thinking about input in these three ways. I also want you to know that we have an amazing resource, the, these can-do um, statements, and having the learner understand from the beginning that um, they are going to be able to do these at the end, that they're going to be able to communicate and exchange information, and getting them comfortable with this can-do um, statements will also allow these really amazing moments for input because they're going to care and they're going to want to learn and they're going to want to do it. So there's always this motivation for them. Um, I do have strategies for you um, for staying in the target language during this time. This information came from um, the Language Educator magazine, um, and this is what we try to do at all times in, in our classroom, 90% target language. Um, but thinking w within PBLL, it's what, what, how is that big idea always going to motivate and drive students to stay in the target language? And we can do that with these meaningful and relevant design, you know, um, projects that we're designing. So, um, all right. So these are the strategies and, um, thinking about our PA, uh, PBLL classroom, we always want to keep these goals in mind. Um, and we don't want, we, we must, it's, it's really interesting because PBLL is, 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 uh, this big idea. Like we want to ensure that during this design that we're making, like w from the beginning that we want to speak only in the second language. We want to make this great environment where the students know that they can make a mistake and it's okay. Um, we're going to have them infer, circle and cute and participate in the community. So when thinking about assessing interaction, we're going to look at the same information. We're going to look at um, this learner-learner um, relationship. And because I feel like sometimes it's hard to um, assess. And um, I, I was able to attend a, an, um, a foreign language educators in New Jersey um, professional development workshop where Fernando Rubio um, presented on um, each of the proficiency levels and can-do statements. And um, he shared this amazing rubric with us that was great for um, an interpersonal, um, anything that's interpersonal, any um, learner-to-learner -learner moment. So um, it was called the talk rubric. And the T stands for talking, A for accurate, L for listening, K for kind. And, um, you know, sharing this with the student and when it's time to have that learner to learner moment, we can assess this in the classroom. So is the student talking? Is it just trying to communicate? Is the task relevant? And then taking this information and capturing it in, um, like as an assessment. So it would look something like this when we would score it. Um, and, um, just a simple plus or minus, um, a check and, um, and it, it like it, it has these points conversions at the bottom, so um, it'll look in your um, I guess grade book or you know in your information. It can look like this, which always helps us stay in the target language when we're thinking about assessment in interpersonal and with interpersonal communication can be seen this way, or we can look at it this way. And um, so. Thinking about your project, thinking about um, what you're designing, 
how will you design a PBLL um, project? I'm sorry, how will you design a PBLL project um, planning interaction and assessing interaction? I'm thinking about the teacher to learner comprehensible, you know, input, the learner to learner, staying in the L2, and then the learner to the L2 community. So um, that's lesson 13, and I want you to keep these um, three in mind when thinking about your project. And I think I'm going to have questions, and yes. I'm just going to... Okay, there we go. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, this is Jim, and I have I two know. questions for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first one was, uh, when. Uh, what does a snowball fight mean in the context of assessment? Okay, so it's a, it's a great formative assessment for students. Um, it could be that closure that you have in the end of class um, where you want to see what they're, what they're able to like ask and answer. So you um, actually have them um, complete sheets of paper, white sheets of paper, and it could be any type. It, it, it's, I mean, there's so many variations to this. Um, so they would write, you would split the room in half. On one side of the room, you would have students write a bunch of questions. Um, and on the other side, you would have them, you know, maybe do um, a different kind of question, and they would actually like crunch up the balls and throw them across the room and have a snowball fight. So you have um, all this amazing information on the floor with uh, with what was collected with, of student learning, like what can they do in the language. So you would pick them up, and the students would ask the questions that their classmates um, wrote down, um, or you could also, instead of asking questions, you could write down um, maybe an idea that they thought about after their learning for the day. And it you know, really gets this rich talking in the classroom, and it's really that moment that we want the learners talking to each other. Okay, um, here is the next question. And by the way, you'll probably also notice that the poll has popped up, so please take some time to answer that. The next question is this. What are a few examples of the L2 statement starters that uh, you use with your students during their conversation about technology? Okay, so it really depends on, let, let's say if we were looking at the authentic text of the um, the Apple, like how to use an Apple icon, you know, something like that. Um, when I would have them partner up together, um, I would have, um, you know, a task that they're going to have to do to share with each other um, what were um, the steps that they remember from from the what, what were the steps that you would say are really important for um, giving a how to, you know, to someone, and so. Um, I would need to know that they should be able, if they're full novice learners, um, I would need to know that they're at the, at that moment, they might not be able to say, um, I believe this is really important, you know, and I would have that sentence starter for them up, you know, up. So, they, so, so what I'm asking for is really the content from the authentic text, but I'm providing that support for them with that sentence starter with, you know, I, um, uh, I think that we should use book. So it really depends on the level of the student, um, the, the proficiency level of the student. Okay. Um, the next questions uh, relate to the talk rubric. Yes. Um, th this says, uh, looks like the talk rubric can be used by students, but needs to be worded a little differently. Does a student version exist? And another question is, where can we find the talk rubric? Okay. So I was able to, um, I mean, it, there is a link here that says thehandbook.heinle.com. Um, I was able to get this information from Fernando Rubio, but I could definitely share this with you and, you know, put the information um, uh, so that everyone can use it. Um, the students can definitely help. Um, we want to create this culture in the classroom where the students monitor staying in the target language. And so using this information on the talk can be made like more student friendly and done in a way that's going to nurture an environment or foster an environment that 
um, they're going to want to motivate each other to stay in um, the L2. So we could definitely make this um, you know, more student-friendly in, in a way to have them assess each other instead of have, having that teacher-learner assessment. You know, could, um, they can support each other. So that's a great um, suggestion. Okay, next question. Um, please explain about the role of TPR. When using TPR, are students expected to produce language? Um, I absolutely think so. Um, and I guess maybe that's something that um, I would connect, like um, when thinking about, for example, um, technology, um, we would connect some type of gesture to um, uploading, downloading, to um, so so whatever gesture that we would come up with in a class, or you know, we would use it at all times. So it would come up a time. It would there would come a point where I would just do the gesture, and they would say the word, you know, connect it to the word or to, to the verb or however that I you know I can't think of like a better example, but. Um, when thinking about technology, there's just, you know, icon, and it, it just, there is a moment from, that goes from input to output. Okay, one final question. Um, this says, uh, when you compare technology, what are the important issues with that comparison? Uh, for example, iPad versus PC. Yeah, so um, people every day when it's time to go shopping, they're like, wait, do I want a Mac or do I want a PC? Like, how do you come up to, with that de decision? So thinking about the needs of our community at that time, um, what we were thinking is the difference in money. We were thinking about um, the, sometimes the difference in um, how user-friendly it is. And, like, the students, I mean, they were experts with this, so they really – they really said like, oh no, like, but a Mac is better because it's more creative. And then they would say, no, but a PC, it's cheaper and you'll be able to um, um, buy other things with your money. So they were able to say all these things in the target language and it was a really rich discussion. Um, so um, unfortunately, the I can't say the, the writing product was authentic because it was um, a letter to a local business over owner having um, where the students had to um, um, persuade him to use either the PC or the Mac um, because he was moving from um, paper to um, technology. But there is a big people think about this a lot. And, um, you know, for a novice classroom, it was it was a, a great use of language there much better than, you know, chapter eight technology in like a Bienvenidos book that has, um, you know, still a picture of, um, what's that called? A uh, payphone, <laughs> you know? So thinking about how, how we engage these learners, it just, it was a whole nother level of engagement for them like that. Mm -hmm.